So I want to start today off with a little bit of a poll. By a show of hands, how many of you remember your high school experience? W was it good? Was it worth it? How many of you had friendships that helped you to get through it? All right, well, guess what? Those friendships, whether you had them or not, whether good or bad, strong or weak, they were all part of God's plan for you and your high school career and your everyday life. Now, I do have to give a nod to uh, Pastor Adrian this morning for helping to expose me to even more ways for this sermon, particularly off of three words from Proverbs chapter 7. Iron sharpens iron. Now, Jesus knew that working together would always make things better. Friendships are no different. Having a group of people that you can count on, that you can rely on, will help you to live day by day in the way you were meant to. When iron clashes together, there are sparks, and during the collision, each piece of iron is altered in appearance. Clashing can happen friend to enemy, or even friend to friend. Jesus had many friends, but he also had many enemies, and he knew what he had to do to protect those he loved, his friends, us. He sacrificed himself for us because he loved us, because he cared for us, just as friends care for one another. This is also seen in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25, where it is written, Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as in the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. What I take from this scripture is, let us find a way to please each other as opposed to angering ourselves and or choosing violence. Let us find a way to please our human nature and spend time with one another, with friends. While Jesus worked hard to please everyone and do everything he could, all because he loved us, it was inevitable that he was going to have haters, and haters are going to hate. Jesus still faced plenty of hardships, but just not in the form of everyday life, of high school in 2023, of everyday life in 2023. My freshman year was last year, and it felt like a breeze. It was so easy, and I felt like nothing was going wrong. I still stayed in touch with friends at my old school. I was even making new ones at my new school. And I feel like this year is just completely different. Because as I've said to a lot of people recently, my sophomore year, I just haven't been so lucky. I've had my fair share of stress, overloading, affections, and plenty of other feelings. And while I've had my ups and downs this year, I have also had friends by my side to help me get through it. I've had uh, not just the ones from previous years, but even new friendships this year. New friendships from my past cross-country season. And all this time, I kept saying, man, I really don't know what possessed my introvert personality to branch out and talk to so many people this past season, referring to the cross-country season. But as I sat down to prepare my message for this morning, I can now confidently say that I do know. It was all part of God's plan. And just as God has a plan for you and me, he had a plan for his very own son, Jesus, which helped lay the foundation for our plans. He chose Mary and Joseph to not only bear our savior, but to also be his first friends and to show him how to make more. In having Jesus connect with others and become friends with any person whose life he touched, he showed us how to live our lives. He showed us how to trust and be trusted by others, by friends. On the path of trust, we will face many twists and turns before we get to the light at the end, if we ever do. Some friendships don't work out, and in the end, just aren't worth it. Looking at you, Judas. But as it is written in John 20, we need to receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Withholding forgiveness, or in simpler terms, holding a grudge, is a fast track to ending a friendship. It can harm the relationship, relationships that don't deserve to be harmed. Not only will it harm the people involved, but also the people around you. Trust me, remember how I said high school is hard? 
I had one week where I was worried that I had lost not one, but two friendships, both of them being new this year. The harm that one friendship caused me put me in a mood that caused me to almost lose another in the span of one week. But just as withholding forgiveness harms a relationship, showing it can repair it. It's like in Psalm 16, where it is written, Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. Here's how I read this. Stay with me, O God, for you are my true friend, who I need by my side. The rest of you are here to grow, and so that we are not apart from one another. How many of you would agree that friends can make their other friends do something that in hindsight wasn't very smart or shouldn't have been done in the first place? I I know I have. And just overall, they can help you stray from your normal ways. Well, guess what? We have all strayed. We have all strayed at one time or another. We have strayed so much that we had to send our best friend to die on a cross just to save us. While there are all these scriptures written about Jesus, he himself strayed. Need some proof? How about John 20, Proverbs 27, Hebrews 10? These are all times where he didn't follow the scripture. Now, why would he, our own shepherd, stray from his path? Simple. He wanted to care for his friends. Because friends make sacrifices for one another. So he made the ultimate sacrifice. He wanted to spend time with us until it was no longer right. He spent time with us on a cross because that was right. And he spent time in a tomb to make it right. It is true what they say. We do have a friend in Jesus, and what a friend he is.